Welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip actually um, comes from, I was watching a really talented um, landscape painter and they were talking about, um, you know, how they get lots of questions about, you know, tips about painting trees. And I was thinking, I get a lot of questions about that too. There's just a couple of just simple elements that I think make a big difference when you're talking about painting trees. And one of them is direction. Direction is very, very important. And what I mean is that having your brush strokes follow the direction in which the tree grows and the way that it moves um, enhances enhances it greatly and I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to go ahead and start playing around um, with this simple sketch um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. We're going to grab uh, some water and we're going to load up this surface. Um, I'm working on Kilimanjaro 300 which was from a block but I removed it because um, I wanted to be able to move it around a little bit. So we're going to um, drop in some color and I'm going to show you what I mean in terms of um, directional movement when we're executing um, the elements of this tree. So we're going to grab some color. Um, I've got some indigo here and you're thinking, ooh, that's a little strong. But I want it to be this kind of um, smoky contrast. I'm not really concerned whether the sky is um, believable blue. I, I just kind of want it to be a little bit more moody than that. So I'll grab a lot more color and bring that in. So, you know, I'm not terribly concerned with that. And what we're going to do is we're going to sharpen that up once we get um, more of the tree elements in there later on. Uh, so we're just kind of getting some color moving right now. All right. Now, one of the things that I see artists do sometimes is you know, like you'll be working and you're not kind, you're kind of not paying attention and you've been working with the same brush for quite a while, like you just kind of fixated on it. That's kind of not like the best way to, to work sometimes. So what I advise you doing is like change the brush um, and you'll change the, the marks that you're making automatically. So we're going to um, grab a little bit of um, this yellow green and I'm just going to kind of drop it in in these areas to kind of start the color. And what we're going to do is like kind of focus on the way that this tree kind of moves. And uh, from this reference image that we'll show you here, you know, this doesn't have like standard exactly like um, leaves and stuff like this. But basically the way that this functions is the same in that you have groups and you have like clusters of foliage that are happening all the same time. But what we don't want to do is just kind of like dab, 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 you know, like and have this same color throughout the whole entire thing. So we're just going to kind of um, drop some in there and let the water do the work because of this wet background, that loose uh, watercolor is going to run and move and do its own thing. And we're going to kind of keep this open to like let the watercolor do the work instead of you just sitting there like obsessing over every little teeny thing that's going on. So we've kind of punched in some color. We're going to mix it up and we're grabbing some earth and green and we're going to let that happen. We're going to punch that in and 
can see again we're letting the the water do the work for us letting it run and play and all that kind of stuff and we'll come back and we will sharpen this up in a way that makes it make more a little bit more uh, structured and have a little bit more visual sense than it does right now and that's okay you know it's fine so we're using our earth and green in combination with this really high key like yellow green okay and so i'm doing now exactly what we were talking about like that we don't want to do one is grab get hairs in your brush is we don't want the same kind of stroke throughout the whole treatment we want it to be varied we want it to do different things uh, so we want to change this up so what's the easiest way to do that without having to like consciously like address every little bit well we're going to change your brush so we're going to grab something else uh, and i'm going to go ahead and grab this flat because that will very very forcibly uh cause us to have to um do something different uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab like this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pretend like i'm like water coming up from the earth and i'm feeding this tree i'm gonna go all the way out to the very very tip ends and i'm gonna grab some more yellow green again and punch up these areas i'm gonna travel all the way from the bottom to the top come up here from the edges and you can see how like this m makes a very very different mark now because where it's wet you're going to get a softer edge where it's drier you're going to get this harder edge and i love all those things uh, now i'm going to actually grab um, a little bit of this this is actually dane smith zoas i i love this color it's so pretty um, and this one's a little bit um, I don't know. Um, it's a very, very mellow, um, welcoming green. And we're going to kind of punch it in there, allow it to do all kinds of different things. And so you can see that we're getting varied treatments. We're getting different ways that the colors are interacting with each other. Um, and the tree is, is got a lot of life in it, um, because of the way it's being addressed. Now, what we're going to do is we've kind of got a lot of really, really organic stuff happening right here. Uh, we're going to let this dry and then I'm going to go back in and touch it up and finish this up. So we'll put a lot of more the the tightness, uh, sharpening it um, in when it's it's a lot drier. But this really gets us started and gets you a feel for how to kind of enliven up trees and kind of get the real feel for that organic growth. Uh, so we will finish this up and uh, show you some stage photos and uh, let's see how this all comes together. So thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy.